welcome. My name is Miss Hansen. I work in the office of ESOL. Let's start working on learning more English. This is lesson number nine. Have a look at today's outcome. Read it to yourself or to somebody near you. So what are you going to do today? That's right, you're going to identify different sentence constructions. Why are you going to do that? So you can learn how to incorporate sentence variety into your writing. Have a look at this sentence. We learned about it in the last lesson. So in 1902, Belgium was the first country to use chlorine to clean or treat water in a public water supply. So when did this happen? 1902. Where did this happen? Belgium. Why did this happen? Clean treat water. How did this happen? Chlorine. In the last lesson, we learned the following, that water treatment is the process of cleaning water. If you have a look at this sentence, the first two words water treatment are in red and the rest of the sentence is in blue. Let's find out why. Water treatment is the subject. The subject tells us what the sentence is about. And here, we know that the subject is water treatment. Is the process of cleaning water? This is the predicate. So the predicate of this sentence is right here, is the process of cleaning water. And it tells us what the subject, what water treatment did. So we know that water treatment, the subject, is cleaning water. It's the process of cleaning water, which is the predicate. To write strong, clear sentences, you must know who or what you're writing about. And this is the subject. You also need to know what you want to say about them. And this is the predicate. Have a look at this vocabulary from the last class. You should remember the words, but I'll read them again. Disinfect. Disinfect. Coagulants. Coagulants. Clump. Clump. Shaking. Shaking. Sediments. Sediments. Membranes, membranes, ultraviolet, ultraviolet, tanks, tanks. These were words that we read about in the last class in a paragraph. And we have the paragraph here. What we're going to do is we are going to circle the subjects and we are going to underline the predicates. So you've just learned that the subject is who or what and the predicate is what it actually did. So I'm going to read this paragraph and you're going to think about the subjects and think about the predicates and then we'll see if we agree. There are several steps that are usually followed in order to disinfect water and make it ready for drinking. First, coagulants or chemicals are added. These cause solid bits or particles in the water to clump together. The water goes through a spinning or shaking process which helps clumps to form. Then, water flows into large tanks and just sits. So, where do you think the subjects are? 
Let's have a look at the first sentence. There you go. There are several steps. Let's have a look at the next sentence. Coagulants or chemicals. Did you get that? Good job. OK, let's look at the next one. Solid bits or particles in the water. OK, next sentence. The water. And the last sentence. Again, water. These are all the subjects. OK, now let's look for the predicates. So if we look at the first sentence, we know that the subject is there are several steps. What follows that? Here we go. Are usually followed in order to disinfect water and make it ready for drinking. So this is what the steps do. OK, let's have a look at the next sentence. So we know that coagulants or chemicals is the subject here. Are added. Very good. OK, then the next one. We've got solid bits or particles in the water. So what is the predicate? To clump together. Good job. OK, next one. The water. What does it do? It goes through a spinning or shaking process which helps clumps to form. This is the predicate. And then the last sentence here. Water, what does it do? It flows into large tanks and just sits. So here we've got the subjects and the predicates. Let's look at the next part of this paragraph. Again, I'm going to read it as I read Think of the words that are the subjects and think of the words that are the predicates. During this time, the solid sediments begin to fall to the bottom and stay there. Cleaner water moves to the top. It travels through membranes. These filter out the smaller contaminants. After this, the water is treated with either chemicals or ultraviolet light in order to kill bacteria and viruses. Once these steps are followed, the water is clean and is ready to flow into pipes and come out of your faucet. OK, so let's look at the first sentence. What is the subject in the first sentence? Good job. We've got solid sediments here. OK, let's look at the next one. Cleaner water. Good. OK, next sentence. It. Good. And what is the it referring to? That's right, it's referring to cleaner water. OK, next sentence. These. So what is the these referring to? Ah, membranes. Next sentence. The water. Yep. Next sentence. The water. Good job. OK, so let's find the predicates now. So we know that the solid sediments is the subject here. What is the predicate in the first sentence? What happens to the subject? Begin to fall to the bottom and stay there. Good job. OK, so then cleaner water. What happens to the cleaner water? It moves to the top. OK, then we know it is referring to the cleaner water. What does it do now? Travels through membranes. That's the predicate. Good. OK, so the membranes is the these. That's what the these refers to. What happens? Filter out the smaller contaminants. Good. OK, then we've got transition phrase here. After this, the water, the subject, what does it do? Is treated with either chemicals or ultraviolet light to kill bacteria and viruses. This is the predicate here. And then the last sentence. Again, we're talking about the water. What does it do? is clean and is ready to flow into pipes and come out of your faucet. Very good. 
Okay, but did you know that your writing will be more interesting if you provide variety to your sentences? And there are four categories for sentence structure. Let's have a look at them. The first one, declarative, interrogative, imperative, exclamatory, or as Americans say, exclamatory. So we have declarative here, sentences that make statements and end with a period. Here's an example. Once these steps are followed, the water is clean. So this is a statement. We have a period at the end of it. Interrogative. Sentences ask a question and end with a question mark. Which country was the first to produce clean water? Here we have a question mark. We're asking a question. Do you remember the answer from the beginning? That's right, it was Belgium. Very good. Imperative. Sentences give commands or make requests and end with a period. Treat the water with chemicals to kill bacteria and viruses. So we have a period at the end of the sentence, but we know that it's basically a command. If you want clean water and you want to treat that water, you're probably going to have to use chemicals to kill the bacteria and viruses. And then lastly, we have exclamatory or exclamatory. Sentences express strong feelings and end in an exclamation mark. The water flowing through my faucet is so fresh and clean. Here we have an exclamation mark. Sometimes it's called an exclamation point. So we have strong feelings about this. We're excited because the water is clean. So let's have a look at some sentences and we need to decide, are they declarative, interrogative, imperative, or exclamatory? So when you brush your teeth, turn off the faucet. Which one do you think it is? That's right, it's imperative. Water is essential to all life. Good job, declarative. People in Mali use three gallons of water a day, but people in the USA use 153 more gallons a day. Exclamatory, very good, because you're exclaiming, that's amazing. We use 153 more gallons a day in the USA than people in Mali, wow. And then lastly, why do people in the USA use so much more water than people in other countries? Good job, interrogative. We've got a question mark here. We're asking a question, why is that? Doesn't make sense. Do you remember why? Now let's go back to today's outcome. So we said that you would be able to identify different sentence constructions. Did you do that? Yes, you did. Good job. And why are you doing that? In order to incorporate sentence variety into your writing. So now, when you write sentences, you want to make sure that you have a different variety and you don't want them all to be the same. Have a great day, everyone. See you next time. Bye.